Okay, here we're going to do another little optimization problem. So, suppose a man has a farm that's adjacent to a river, and he wants to build an, a little rectangular pen for his cows, and he has 500 feet of fencing. So, if one side of the pen is the river, so maybe his little, his little farm has the river next to it, or going through it, um, and again, the idea is, hey, his cows, ain't, they're, they're not going to swim away. So, in essence, we can assume the river is kind of functioning like part of the fence. We want to know what's the area of the largest pen that he can build. All right, so I'm just going to sketch a little picture here to try to make some sense out of this. All right, well, so... All right, so maybe there's the river... Uh, there's the, the nice river there. Um, he's going to build a rectangular pen, so I'm just going to draw a generic little rectangle. All right, so there is, is his rectangle. And the idea is, right, we could make it sort of longer, uh, but not as wide, or, you know, maybe wider, but not as long. We want to know which one's going to give us the maximum area. So again, he has 500 feet of fencing. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little equation to sort of represent the situation. So um, I don't know really any of the dimensions. So this is where we just start labeling things with variables. So suppose uh, suppose I call this length x. Um, so he, use x, he uses x feet of fencing here. Well, we can also, uh, since it's a rectangle, this would also have to be x feet of fencing. Well, he's used 1x plus 1x. He's used 2x of uh, the 500 feet of fencing. So the remaining m amount of fencing would be, well, he's, he's got 500 total, and he would have to take away the 2x that he's already used. So again, uh, we're going to assume certainly he uses all the fence. So the idea is, if this is x, this is x, generically, the remaining amount of fence would be 500 minus 2x. Well, the thing that we want to maximize in this case, we want to maximize the area. Well, the area of this pen, generically, right, to get the area, we would just take, uh, you know, the width times the length. So the width, we can think about that as being x. Uh, the length would be 500 minus 2x. And now this is the thing that we want to maximize. So uh, again, to find a maximum or a minimum, now we're going to come up with the derivative, find critical points, uh, do all that stuff. To me, a lot of times, this is the hard part getting to here. You know, what's the actual formula that I need to start doing things with? And you know, again, what I do is I just try to make a picture. And if I don't, you know, if you don't know things, which in this case we certainly wouldn't, just label them generically. And hopefully, you know, as you go through this, uh, you know, you'll, you'll find some stuff to sort of work with. Alrighty, well, before I take the derivative, if we took the derivative immediately, we would have to use the product rule, and it, you know, it wouldn't be that bad. But I'm going to multiply it out first. So we would have 500x when we distribute, and then we would have negative uh, 2x times x, which is negative 2x squared. And now we can take the derivative, I think, without too much trouble. The derivative of 500x will just be 500. The derivative of negative 2x squared, well, the 2 would come out front and give us negative 4, and then we would take 1 away. So we would end up with 500 minus 4x. And again, what we want to do now is find these uh, critical points. So we want to take our derivative, set it equal to 0. Uh, we would also like to know uh, where the derivative is undefined. But again, so we want to know where the derivative is 0 where the derivative is undefined. Again, for this type of equation, 500 minus 4x, this is defined for all values of x, so we don't have to worry about this part of, uh, you know, solving this equation. We can certainly take the derivative and set it equal to 0. So 500 minus 4x equals 0. We can add the 4x to both sides. Um, we can divide both sides by 4. And it looks like to me that's going to give us x equals 125. So, again, technically, um, you know, if the problem is phrased correctly, um, the maximum or minimum is going to have to occur uh, at, at 
the critical point. Um, so you can kind of almost conclude, well, this has to give a maximum. But again, let's just justify it real quick. So I'm going to put this on my number line. I'm going to think about the, the sign of the derivative, and then I'm going to think about what that does to the original function. So again, I'm going to chop this off at 0. I'm going to chop this off at 0. You can't use, uh, I guess you could use 0 feet of fencing. Uh, you wouldn't have a very good rectangle, I guess. And we're just going to take a number, uh, any number greater or in between 0 and 125. So maybe I'll just use x equals 1. Again, our derivative was 500 minus 4x. So if we plug 1 into our derivative, we would just get 500 minus 4 times 1. And the main thing to catch, again, in this case is, well, I guess let's do it. It's 496, which is a positive number. And since the derivative is positive over that interval, it tells me that the original function is increasing. So as x increases, so as this gets bigger, 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 up to 125, it says the overall area of the rectangle is uh, also increasing. And then we can take any number bigger than 125. Um, how about we take x equals, um, well, let's see. I guess we should be a little careful. So notice here we can't make x as big as we want because uh, there would kind of be a cutoff based on this formula, right? If x went beyond, say, 250, you know, if it was like 300, it would say this length would be 500 minus 2 times 300, which would be 500 minus 600, which would be negative 100, which doesn't make sense. So I think kind of the largest amount of fencing we could use, we would have to let x equal 250. And again, in that case, somehow you don't even have a rectangle. So let's take something between 125 and 250. Maybe we'll pick x equals 200. I'm going to plug that into my derivative again and just think about the sign of it. So we would have 500 minus 4 times 200. Well, that's going to be 500 minus 800. That'll give us negative 300. So again, that tells me that the since the derivative is negative, it tells me that the original function starts decreasing at that point. So that tells me that the area increases um, as x approaches 125. Once you go past 125, it starts decreasing. So hey, in fact, um, if we let x equal 125, that's going to give us a maximum area. And now I, you know, always go back. Sometimes they ask for the dimensions. Sometimes they say, like in this, what is the area of the largest pin? Well, we can just go back to our um, you know, our little area equation. So it doesn't matter where you plug it in here. So again, what we say x was, I've already forgotten. So we said <clears throat> the maximum is when x equals 125. So if we plug that into our area equation, we can actually get a value. So it says the max area would be when we plug in 125. So hey, that would just give us 125 times 500 minus 2 times 125. So that's 125. Uh, let's see, 2 times 125 would be 250. 5 minus uh, 250 would be still 250. And I'm going to use a little calculator here. So 125 times 250, that's going to be... 31,250, and I can't remember if we put any units on here. Uh, yes, we had feet, so it says the maximum area would be 31,250 uh, square feet. So we write that as a little feet with the exponent. Um, and that's it. So the idea is find a formula for whatever you're trying to maximize or minimize, take the derivative, find these critical points by figuring out where it's zero, where it's undefined, solve those equations. Um, again, in this case, we didn't have to worry about where it's undefined. Once you do that, I make my little number line. I test a point from each interval, again, just to figure out if the derivative is positive or negative. Uh, if it's positive, tells me the function's increasing. If it's negative, it's decreasing. And from that, I can conclude that I've got a maximum at 125. And then it was just a matter of sort of plugging 125 back into the, the formula that will actually compute that area.